So the next thing we're going to do is figure out how we can register users using a form. And what we essentially want them to do is from the details of a registration form, we want to create a new user document in our database so that we have a new user that we can log in for. And what I have is in the pro in the home page of my own project, I've created a form here. And the action, which is the route that it posts to, is slash register like this. And the method is post. And what I have is I have a username field with the name of username, a name field with the na label of name, um, bio field with the name of bio, an image URL field with the name of pic, and a password field with the name of password. And then there's a register button as well. So if I run that now and we go to localhost 3000, we can see that the registration form is right here. And what they'll do is they'll put in these details and then we want to make sure that we create a new user document in our database with those details. And, <coughs> excuse me. So what we need to do is a multi-step process. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that we set up a post route for this slash register because this is a post to slash register. So we'll just say app.post and the root is slash register. And then after this, remember, we can chain multiple middlewares together. So the first step we have to do is we have to make sure that we grab all the information from this form. The next step is to create a document in the database for that user if it doesn't exist. And the final step is to log that user in and then navigate them to their profile page. So the first thing we want to do is grab the um, f the values from these form inputs and put them into our request body. And to do that, we can use our good friend body parser once again. So we want to mount the URL encoded middleware of body parser. And again, it's the object inside it is extended as false. I actually remembered it properly this time. So now in the request body, we should have um, a request.body.username, request.body.name, request.body.bio, request.body.image, and whatever. So we have all the fields now. So the next thing to do is create it, um, basically create it in the database. So create a document for the user in the database if it doesn't exist. And I'm going to create a middleware function for this. So it will take in a request and a response, and also next, since this is not going to be our final middleware. And the first thing I want to do is check if the user already exists. And if the user already exists, um, we want to make sure that we can't register another user with the same username. So what I'm going to do is say db.collection. And remember db right here is an object that has access to our database that we set up here, which is called um, local db in this case. And what I'm going to do is call a method on the users collection. So I'll say db.collection users like this. So that's this right here. And what I'm going to do is call the find one method. And as a first argument, you give it an, a query object with what you're looking for. And we want to look for any documents that have username equal to the request.body.username, which is the username field that they typed into the registration form that body parser has picked up for us and put into request.body.username. So the next um, argument to this is a callback function, which takes in an error. And the second argument to this is the user document that's been returned. And what we can say is if there was no error, so if exclamation mark error and the user document exists, so this means that there's already a user um, document in our database, which has the same username that the user used to register. And um, what we can then do is say response dot redirect, and we can just redirect it back to the home route or the slash route, because that's what they'll be using to um, log into with that user or register a different user. Um, in a realistic scenario, what you do here is you'd probably give an error message or something like user already exists, but I just want to keep it simple for now. So if the user already exists, they'll be redirected back to this page. Um, if that's not the case, what we want to do is create a new user. So create user document. I don't know if these comments are really helpful to be honest, but I'm going to put them in just in case. So on the D on the users collection again, what we can do is call a method here called insert one, and insert one is basically like find one, but it allows us to um, 
insert the document that we put into our object right here. So we want the username of the created documents to be request.body.username. Um, I'm just going to stop this server. And then we want the password field, so password, and that's going to be request.body.password. We want the name field to be request.body.name. We want the bio field to be request.body.bio. And finally, we want the, I think the image is stored in a field called pick. Yeah, pick right here. And we want that to be, um, let's have a look, request.body.pick. Okay, so what this will do is it'll create um, a document with all of our fields filled out from our form. So the next argument to this is a callback function which takes in an error and the data this time is the created user document if it has been created. And what we can say here is um, if the error, if there's no error, so if exclamation mark error and the created user exists, so this means that we were able to create um, a user with those details in our database, then what we want to do is just run next because we're ready to move on to the next middleware because we've created our user. So that's that middleware function right there. And I'm just going to hide it for now just so it looks a bit cleaner. Okay, so now the user should have been created in our database and we're ready to log in the user since the user exists. So what we can do now is just use the um, passport.authenticate to log in the user. And I'll show you why that works. Because we gave a username and password in the form and body password has put that in the use in the request of body dot username and request of body dot password and Passport can then use this local strategy, which is this right here, and it will give request.body.username and request.body.password here. And since we created the document in the middleware function before that, um, we know that this will find a document right here and it will be successful. And again, if this fails for some reason, um, this will be they'll be just be redirected back to the login page. So now they're logged in and the um, once they're logged in, remember, once this has happened, um, it'll be serialized into a user ID. And then anytime on any, any route after that, we'll have this user ID right here and it will be um, deserialized and the request.body.user will contain our user document. So what we can just now do is say, um, create a final middleware function that takes in a request and a response. And what we just want to do here is say response.redirect and we just want to redirect them to the profile page to view their profile. And remember once again when we set up the profile route that um, it actually runs the is signed in function right here which only redirects to that route if they're um, signed in on the cookie exists otherwise it goes back to the login route. And again the, the all the fields for the um, for, uh, for the profile page are given from the request user, which is created when it's DC realized. So that should be everything we need to do. Um, I don't expect it to work the first time, so let's have a look. So if we go here, and I'm gonna empty cache and do a hard reload just to make sure. I'm, I'm just gonna create a new user, so let's say Tina, since we're up to T now. And I'll have a bio saying something like, horses are my favorite. I don't know. I'm just going with different animals at the moment. Um, an image URL. I just used um, generated photos again. So I'm just going to copy this image address and then paste that in. And the password, I'm just going to put horse or something like that. If I click register now, hmm. um, in the last video, when we set up the um, this 404 route right there. Um, I said that we have to put it below all our other routes, otherwise none of our previous routes will work. So this register route was after our 404 route, which is why it ran this before it ran that. Um, let's try that again. So if we just go back here and I just put a password in again, horse like this, and then submit it. Um, oh, oops. I forgot to start the server. Okay, 
Now if I put the password in and submit it, we can see that uh, we've been redirected to our profile page. And in the database, if I just go ahead and refresh it, we should see that the Tina entry has now been added down here. Yep. And we can see that Tina's profile information is also available and the name and the bio and the image is being displayed right here. And if we log out now, we can see that we've destroyed that session. So that's essentially what we're going to be doing in this challenge. So the first thing we have to do is in the home page in views and then pug and then index, um, we have this registration form, but it only shows if the show registration variable is set to true when it's being rendered. So what you just want to do is in server.js, the, at the point where we rendered the home page, we just want to make sure that show registration is set to true here. And if we refresh that now, we can see that the registration form has now appeared. So then we want to set up a post route for this um, route, a post route for um, slash register right here. And um, I normally would say app dot post and then slash register, but I'm going to do the same thing that they've done here because I have a feeling that's how it gets marked. So I'll just do app dot root. This is essentially the same thing as app dot post slash register. So we'll say app dot root slash register. And then we'll say dot post here like this. Okay, so the first middleware we want to mount once again is to grab the details from our form. And we just want to make sure that we mount the body parser. Um, so just we, you can just copy and paste that in from one of your previous projects. I think I already also did it for the login, yeah. Um, the next thing we want to do is set up our middleware function. And remember that takes in a request and a response. Um, but um, in this example, I think it tests that you've used rec and res instead. So we want to make sure we use rec, res, and next here. And the middleware function should be pretty much the same. So I'm just going to copy and paste it just to save time, but I will explain it. So if we go up here, um, yeah, and expand this out. I'm just going to copy this right here. then paste it and then clean it up. Um, I just have to make sure that I replace these with Rex. And the free code camp form, by the way, it only takes in a username and password. So we can forget about all of these extra fields right there. So again, what this middleware function does is it first checks the database if there's a user with that username already. And if that's the case, it will just redirect back to the login page because we can't create two users with the same username. Otherwise, what it does is it creates a user document um, with a request.body.username or request.body.password, which it picked up from here because we have body parser mounted just before this. And what this will then do is it'll put that created user in our database. And if there's no error with that and the created user exists, it will run next, which will run the next middleware function. So that's um, that right there. So the next thing we want to do is authenticate this. So I'm just going to say um, passport.authenticate. And once again, uh, remember that we're using our local strategy, so it's just called local. And we want to set the failure redirect to um, just the slash root right there. And the final thing to do is um, render the profile page. So I'm just going to say request or rec and res here. And we just want to make sure that we uh, render as uh, root to slash profile. So we'll say res dot um, redirect. And we want to redirect to slash profile. Uh, I'm just going to format it just to clean this up. So again, um, we can use the password local, which um, uses this right here to authenticate us. So let's try running that and see what happens. Um, obviously, I don't expect this to work first time at all. So we're just going to submit it and see what errors come up and then try and fix them slowly. Okay, so most of them have worked. It's just these two. So if we just take a look at the um, advanced node and then use this, 
we'll see that they've created a user for us here. So I'm just gonna try um, logging in with that user and seeing what happens because it says the login isn't working. So if I try logging in, we know that the user exists in our database. Yeah, this is the, um, the authentication has failed, which means that we probably have a issue with our serialized function or deserial when we're deserializing actually. So it's it's in the part where we're recovering it from the database. Um it's because um I think it's something to do with this object ID. Yeah, I forgot to declare this as dot object ID like this. So this is supposed to be like this where it says dot object ID. Um, what I'm going to do is, every time you run this test, by the way, you have to make sure that you delete um, the user entry that they created because they're going to try and register with the same name over and over again. Um, so if we try sharing that now and submitting it, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, we can see that all of those tests have passed now. So what I'm going to show, again, it was because I forgot to declare the object ID properly. So once again, I'll walk you through what happens here. So, so we're down here in the register. So body pass will pick up the username and password fields from this, um, oops, from these fields right here. And it's available in request.body.username, request.body.password. And then what happens is that we find, we see if there's an entry with that username in our database. And if that's the case, we just redirect back to the login route. If that's not the case, then what happens is we create a document with those usernames and passwords. And then uh, we try and, and if that gets created, okay, and we have the created user, we run the next function. And the next function that gets run is this passport.authenticate local. And what happens is um, when we remember that a request or body dot username or request or body dot password will put there or already by body parser. So this request or body dot username request or body dot password um, get given to this local strategy right here, and then um, they basically see if the usernames and passwords match from the database, which they should do now since we just created the document. And what this will then do is it'll get serialized here and the ID will be saved to a cookie. And then Passport will check that if there's an ID in the cookie and if we can use that ID to find the user document again, which we can do since it, like I said, it exists. And if that's the case, then this won't fail. If that fails, it'll go back to the login route, but it hasn't failed. And if that's the case, it will redirect to the profile route. And remember that the profile route renders the profile pug page and it takes in the username from our request.user and that's what will get displayed here. So if I were to sign in with um, the free code camp user that they just created right here, and I put the password in, we can see that we get the profile with the username. So that should be everything you need to do. Again, this was a very complicated challenge. So if you need me to explain anything, just put a comment in and I'll try my best. Um, I'll also put my um, code in the description as well, because I think you might have to have the exact code in some parts. But yeah, that's everything you need to do here. And then you can go ahead and submit that.